Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Topaz Studio 2 today. Uh, this is episode 3 of Lair Masking Demystified. Today we're going to go over the uh, spot uh, layer masking tool as well as the grad or the graduated filter layer masking tool. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have this image here of this shape. It looks like a flower shape with petals on it here in the center. This is going to help us understand how this spot uh, masking tool works. Okay, so just like in my last video, I'm going to come up to add filter and we're going to use, uh, we could use any filter, but I'm going to use color overlay because it's easiest to understand with that. So let's click on color overlay. Let's come to color, the drop down menu. Let's click it and let's pick a nice magenta color here and click OK. And now we're going to come up here to the layer mask icon. Give it a click. That opens up the layer mask uh, uh, tool here. And let's click on spot because we're going to start with spot. Let's notice a few things here. Uh, right down here, see where it says mask area? Right now it's on inside. I could also click at the outside and you see things change here. But we're going to start out with inside because what I want to show you first is how to use the uh, spot layer mask tool to remove the effect from the interior portion of the spot that would be in this area right here. Also notice our layer mask here. You can see the black portion in the center, which will have no effect added to it because we have a black portion in the center, which is a hide all layer mask. OK, and the white areas lets the effect show, show through. And you can see it here where that magenta color is there on the outskirts of the image, but not on the interior. OK. Uh, let's examine what these uh, controls do here. All right. First off, let's go to the edge wear at the bottom. If I move the edge wear to the right, the whole way to the right, you can see that it is it is uh, protecting these petal edges here. And that's what the edge wear is all about, protecting edges. Okay. It looks for edges. Now, if I move it to the left, you'll see it's protecting them less and less and less until I get the whole way to the left and it's not protecting anything and you see just the circle right here and you can see the circle right in here as well all right so now let's look at the transparency what does the transparency slider do just like I told you in my last video that would be more of a fine-tuning adjustment so if I take this slider and start to move it to the right this square right here starts to turn gray and it gets lighter and lighter and you'll notice it's getting lighter gray here and the effect is starting to come over the image so if i was starting out here but i wanted to had have just a little bit of that effect show through on the center spot i could move this transparency to the right and just start to add a little bit in and so that's more for fine tuning now when i take it the whole way to the right it turns uh completely white so let's take it the whole way back to the left i just want you to see that first and then secondly we have roundness now this, uh, this overlay you see here, red circle, a white circle, and a green circle, okay? The red circle means everything inside the red circle, there's no effect added, uh, and it starts to transition out to the white circle and the whole way out to the green. So here's the transitional zone, right between the red and the green, okay? Now, secondly, let's look at the roundness. Uh, right now we're at a round circle, so watch when I start to move this roundness slider to the left. Notice how the circle starts becoming more square shaped until I get it the whole way to the left and it makes itself a complete square. As I start to move the roundness to the right, the corners start to get curved. Okay, can you see that? Now I generally use this uh, spot tool as a circle generally but you can change the shape if you needed to but that's what the roundness does now the transition is interesting watch the red line and the green line how they change when i move the transition first off i'm going to move it to the left you see that transitional zone like if i stop right here from the red to the green narrows out so there's less of a transition i can keep moving it to the left till there's no transition you can see it right here i just have a green circle and here i just have a uh, perfect circle right here with no transition on it whatsoever. So when I take the transition and start to move it to the right, see how that uh, this uh, area right in here from the red to green starts to widen out until I get it the whole way to the right. And that's as far as I can go, but that's the transition. Like no effect here and it transitions till it hits the green. And once it hits the green, it's total white out here. And you can see it here. You can see how it's dark in the center and it gets lighter gray as it comes out. And that's the transition. So 
Uh, the transition is really nice because you really won't be able to tell where the effect ends. It kind of blends out smoothly, which is really cool. And again, the transitional tool is another uh, fine-tuning adjustment. Okay, And if you double-click any of these uh, slider names, it'll reset them back to default. So let me click around and switch it. Defaults at 1, transition defaults at 0 0.50, and edge aware if I double-click it it defaults at uh, 0 0.50. But for now, I'm going to take the edge where and move it the whole way to the left. Now let's notice something very interesting, and that's dealing with the transition in the edge where. So let's take the edge where and start to drag it to the right, and, and watch, watch how it grabs these edges here. I'm going to move it the whole way to the right, okay? But now watch something else. I'm going to come to the transition here and watch... Watch this portion of the image here, uh, the petals here. You can see right now there's some gray in here, and but the petals themselves are totally white, so there's no effect on them. But watch when I take this transition the whole way to the right. Watch what happens there. Something interesting. And also watch this little bit of gray area here, this, uh, this graduation point in here. Watch when I take the transition the whole way to the right. Notice something very interesting that happens when I get it the whole way to the right. It totally just uh, selects that pedal right there with the edge wear. So the transitions the whole way to the right, the edge wears the whole way to the right. And this is just something I want to point out to you. It's kind of interesting. That shape is totally um, in effect cut out. In other words, the uh, overlay, as you can see, the pink overlay is only on the outskirts of the pedal here. But the pedal itself has nothing on it, okay? Which is really interesting. And if I come up here to color overlay and take this opacity slider and take the whole way to the right, you can see there's that filter effect. Now, again, that filter could be anything. It could be an impression filter. Imagine like this pink area would be an impression filter. And I had a flower image here. And I wanted the uh, flower in the center to have no uh, painterly effect but the outskirts of the image to all have a painterly effect. So that would be one application of using the uh, spot masking tool. I went ahead and reset this uh, spot tool so I could show you one more thing, and that's concerning this overlay right here, okay? Notice on this overlay here, we have these white squares, okay? They're all around it here, mainly on the uh, green area here and on the white area here. But what these are for is you can change the shape of this circle. Uh, I showed you how you could use the roundness to make it a square, but you can also change the shape by dragging these uh, squares here. And, you know, I can make it oval in, in different directions and things like that. I can grab any one of these squares and do that. You know, I might want to shape something like this. Okay, and then in the center, you notice that, that my uh, tool turns into a little hand, so I can take this and move this around. Okay. And again, I can drag the shape on these squares here. And you can even drag, whenever you see that uh, arrow, that line with the two arrows, you can drag that way as well. Okay, and change the shape. But the squares are the best way to grab it. So you'll know any square that you grab will change in all the shape. And then when you see the hand tool, you can move that shape around, which is, which is really inter interesting. So you can get any old shape that you want right there. The last thing I want to show you is if you uh, take your cursor and move it outside of the circle here, see how you see that little curve with the two little arrows on it? That enables you to, with your mouse, you can uh, change the angle here, okay? So all you have to do is, again, hover outside of the uh, circle, and you can change the angle. So, man, look at all the different uh, possibilities you have here. Now, next, I'm going to show you an actual uh, photograph, and we're going to use the... Uh, the spot masking tool and you'll say, oh, I'll see how this actually works for us. I have this image of some flowers in a basket right here. Let me show you the before. So I just added an impression filter right here. So let me click this eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. So a nice little painting effect on here. But what I would like to do is remove some of that effect from these three flowers in here, but I want to keep a little bit of a little bit of the effect on them, okay? So the way I would do that, and we're working with the spot masking tool, okay? So I'll come up to the impression layer right here and click on the layer mask icon, like I've been doing, and I would come down and click on spot, all right? And then this circle overlay comes up here, and now I can take it and I can move it. Another thing I can do with it is I can come to these outer squares here and see how this, see that little, uh, line there with the arrows on both sides. If I come there and click and drag inward, I can change the size of this circle. Okay, so I'm gonna make that size smaller 
and my little hand tool comes up in the center here. I'm going to drag it right over the center of those flowers right there. Oh, and by the way, you have this mask area here inside right now. It's taking the, taking the effect off the inside of the image. If I click it on outside, it would take it off the outside, but leave it on the inside. So you have, you can go either way there. So, but I want it on the inside. So I'm going to click inside again. All right, and now uh, the edge aware is on by default. Remember at point or at 0 0.50 right there, which is pretty good actually right there. And it's latching onto the petal edges of this flower right here. Now, I want to leave some of the painterly effect on the center of the flower. So what I'm going to do is come to this transparency slider and it's going to fine tune this mask for me. So what I'll do is I'll take this slider and start to drag it to the right. And notice this swatch right here was black when it's at the left. It's totally black. As I start to move it to the right, it gets lighter, and that's letting some of that effect come through. And if I take it the whole way to the right, it becomes a white reveal all mask, and you can see the painterly effect is over everything again. So I can take this transparency slider, and I'm going to move it back and just add a little bit of that painterly effect to the center portion of the flower right there, which looks really beautiful. And this is a technique I use all the time when I'm using the impression filter. So this is a great tool to spot the spot masking tool okay and when you're happy with it all you have to do is click apply but you can also adjust the roundness here and you can adjust the transitional area but i'm really happy with it right here and of course you can adjust the edge aware as well but that looks good so i'm going to click apply now after i click apply uh, i can come here and continue to refine this mask by using the brush tool or graduated filter or luminosity or color masking whatever i want to do but i'm really happy with that but that's a practical application of using the uh, spot masking tool now we're moving on to the grad uh, layer masking tool here okay so what i want to do here to explain how this works is I'm going to do two things. One thing I want to do is darken the top portion of this image to close it off, which is a typical thing you do in landscapes. And then I'm going to do another, add another filter and add a little bit of uh, detail to the uh, foreground area here with, uh, and use the uh, grad filter to help us there. Okay. So first off, what we're going to do is click add filter. I'm going to do the sky first, darken the sky first. So we're going to come up here and get a basic adjustment here. And what I'm going to do is just take the exposure and pull it down, darken it up a good bit. We can come back and readjust this if I went too far. Okay, so right like that. And then we're going to come up to the uh, layer mask icon and click it. And this time we're going to get the grad um, layer masking tool right here by clicking it. And when I do, you'll notice here something. We see this uh, overlay here, green line, white, and a red. Uh, the white line area, it lets you move this up and down like so. And this is your graduation zone between green and red. Whenever you see red, that tells us that anything above the red will be a black hide all layer mask. And you can see it right there. And there's an edge wear here too. Let's take that edge wear for now. And let's just take it the whole way off. So we get a nice uh, smooth uh, graduation zone in between here and here. And you can see it right in here, right? And then we can move this up and down, okay? And then we can take uh, either one of these squares. We can click and drag inward or outward and, and increase or decrease this zone. I want to uh, decrease it, so I'm going to grab the screen and I'm just going to drag up. Or I could have took the red and drug, drug down either way, maybe something like that. But I have a problem here because I want the white reveal all to be on the top because I don't want to darken the bottom of, bottom of my image, but only the top. So I'm going to transition this in a little bit more here. And here, this gets a little wonky, so here's how you turn this. If you click either one of these squares, the red or the green, click with your mouse and drag, and you can angle it like this. See, you can move it around. So I can make the right side of my image light, like so, or the left side. I can keep turning it around like this. You see that? So you can move it in any direction you want. But there you go. Now I moved it to the um, top. So now the green is at the top, so the white... Reveal all is at the top and the hide all is at the bottom. And then I can take my transitional zone here again and I can drag it out. Again, this is a typical thing you'll do to a landscape image, uh, closing off the top of the image. And then you can come here and just, you know, straighten this line out if you need to. But something like that is really cool. So maybe right around there. And when you're happy with it, you can just click apply. And of course, you can take this transparency here and you can... 
you know, you can drag it to the right and the dark area will start to lighten up. So it'll add a little bit of that darkening effect down there. And sometimes you want to do that. But in my case, I'm just closing off the top. So I want the darker portion of the top. So I'm going to click apply. I'll show you how the edge wear works when I do the bottom. So let's click apply. And there we go. So now let's click on our basic adjustment layer. And again, we can take this exposure and we can readjust it here. But isn't that cool? We've closed off the top of the image like that. Next, we're going to add some detail to the bottom using a grad uh, layer masking tool and a uh, uh, precision detail filter. All right, I added a precision detail filter. Now, right now it's off, so let's click its eyeball and turn it on. Now, I don't want it up in the sky here, okay? So I'm going to use that uh, layer masking grad uh, tool to fix this for me. So what we'll do is come up to the precision detail, click the layer mask icon, and we're going to click grad again. And this time the the filter is in the right direction because the green is at the bottom letting that effect at the bottom. The red at the top is removing it from the top portion. Okay, so we have a black hide all and a white reveal all there. Now the edge wear is on, so let's just shut it off for now. Okay, and you can see the graduation point here. And again, I can come here with either the red or green and I can readjust this zone in between here. Because remember, the effect graduates from the green to the red. Okay, so let's move it up maybe somewhere right around in here. I think that might be pretty good. And remember, we can straighten it by adjusting the angle here. All right. And now we have this um, edge of wear, so I can start to move it to the right. And see how it's latching on to any lines and things like that? But look how cool that is, right? Like so. So I can adjust that any way I'd like it. And I'm thinking maybe right around in there looks pretty good. Now I can come here and readjust this a little bit. And that looks pretty cool. So that's pretty nice. We used precision detail. And we're only adding it to the bottom. So let's click apply here. Now, again, after I click apply, I can say if I didn't want it in this area right over here, I could come and grab a brush and erase it from there. Okay, so we could use that. I'm going to have another uh, video where I go in detail over the brush tool. Okay, that's the next video. So I'm not going to do that now. All right, so now let's come back up to precision detail here and let's click this eyeball before and after. Isn't that cool? And of course, we can come to precision detail and we can take, if we went too far, we can take the opacity, pull it off and just add up as much as we need. Well, there you have it, the spot masking tool and the grad masking tool. Two wonderful tools inside of Topaz Studio 2. Hats off to uh, Topaz Studio 2. I'd take my hat off if I had one on. Don't have one on today, by the way. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one for joining me on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly today. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.